Hello and welcome to the Unit 3 webinar for Venture in the Flam Gospel Weeklies. We're going to go through the eight lessons in this unit that begin with the second Sunday in Ordinary Time, which is right in front of you, um, January 17th, 2021. And these eight lessons take us through um, this first part of Ordinary Time and then into Lent. And we'll get through the third Sunday of Lent. The final lesson is um, March 7th, 2021, the third Sunday of Lent. But um, before we, we begin, um, I kind of want to format this just as if I were sitting with you and we were going through lessons before uh, you begin teaching either your child at home or you're teaching a classroom either in person or via Zoom or another video conferencing service. So before we begin, let's gather the components that you need. So the student lessons, your, um, your nest of student lessons should have this, um, this cover. And then if we move forward, um, you also need your student catechism handbook. Um, I will probably heretofore re uh, reference it as WCBT, which is short for what the church believes and teaches. Um, so I may shorthand it as WCBT. Um, so have that. Um, also, um, we have two options right now um, as the teaching guide. We have our standard teaching guide that are used by teachers and catechists. Um, you know that you're, if you're familiar with the program, you um, have used this before and each, uh, each guide has a four page um, lesson plan that starts with the pacing plans, um, materials, scripture background, and then takes you step by step, page by page. But in this unusual year, we have also added parent teaching pages, which are, are available um, on our website. So um, gospelweeklies.com. And then if you go to the top window, the browse window, and you search by level, and you just go to venture and scroll down, it has everything that you'll need um, for teaching a venture lesson, including assessments, but also these parent teaching pages. So you can go down and download those, excuse me, or just follow them on the screen. Um, the format of this that you'll see, instead of doing a four page lesson plan, we, it's just two pages. The other nice thing about this is that it's got the, um, the checklist. You don't have to sit down with your student and teach for an hour or an hour and a half or get through all of the steps of a lesson. This is made that you can you know, put, pick this up, put it down, um, but for your convenience, so you remember the activities that you have completed, um, we have this checklist. So um, it, it just, you know that you've gone through everything, especially if your student uh, needs to complete the assessment um, for, your, um, for your program. But let's go through um, just a quick note before we dive in, excuse me, go, I'm gonna go back to this um, first page in the lesson. A quick note um, just in general, um, about teaching, make sure that you, um, you're you still preparing a prayer space, whether this is somewhere at home in a, um, a family room or dining room, um, some quiet space in your home. Um, whether you're meeting in the typical classroom or you're teaching at home, you wanna prepare a prayer space for the gathering and closing prayers in the lesson and for proclaiming the gospel. Um, it can be simple. Um, I'd gather a Bible, like your family Bible, a candle and a lighter or matches, a cross or crucifix, and a small cloth in that Sunday's liturgical color. And if you're wondering what the color is, on the cover of every lesson, um, at the bottom band, and also the text color of the Sunday um, and date, are always printed in the liturgical color. So we're in ordinary time, so we're in green. And this, this cloth doesn't need to be elaborate. I think in a lot of parishes, they have just an assortment of um, small pieces of felt um, in that liturgical color. Um, this is nice for just keeping students aware of the changes in our, um, in our church year. So we're back to um, ordinary time, to green time. So um, your prayer space is important 
um, very important in this unit, both for um, continuing or establishing a classroom routine um, and that uh, regular prayer ritual. Um, venture students are definitely in an age where they can begin to take a more active role in setting up the space as well as offering their own prayer intentions. Um, prayer is at the heart of every flom lesson, um, as well as the, the Sunday readings, but even more so perhaps during Lent, as we are encouraging the children to pay uh, special attention to the regularity of their prayer routine. They aren't regular pray prayers uh, that they would get into that habit, um, or if they do pray regularly, how um, they can enhance that experience by um, learning other prayers of the church, um, learning more spontaneous prayer. Um, that's something you can um, talk to together as a class. Um, let's, there are a few things that we wanna note in the lessons, and I will try to do that as we, um, as we go through. Why don't we do that in this first lesson here? The first thing I wanna note is uh, something we've added this year Forgive me while I flip through these pages. I know that's hard on the eyes. Um, but right here, um, note this, um, this code. If you have, um, if you're not familiar with these, these are called QR codes. You need something on your phone called a QR reader. And if any of this sounds like um, a foreign language to you, ask a kid, they'll get you set up. But um, the idea is you take your smartphone over this, hover over it, and it will take you directly to the places um, on the internet, uh, specifically on our website, in this case, where you will um, go to uh, the family resources. So like the parent, pay, uh, uh, the parent teaching pages that I mentioned before. But there are also other examples, and I'll try to point them, remember to point them out as we go through lessons, where um, there might be a link to a video. So let's say there's a story about, um, about Pope John the 23rd, and we've decided that um, there's a maybe a five minute video about his life. So that's something that you can watch in class. I typically try not to choose videos that are any longer than five minutes. Um, if you don't have time in class, it's a nice way for kids to share with their families what they've been learning and they can watch them at home together if they're not already learning at home together. Um, but it's just a nice way to reinforce what they're learning in class. Um, the other items, um, let's see. Oh, another thing that we'll have in this, in this unit is um, I did a link with a QR code to our lesson update page. And that's a place where if we have, um, oops, we forgot to include um, answers to puzzles or something like that, we'll include that, that's on our website. And um, this time I thought we had a kind of a complicated activity. And I'm like, well, I could tell you how to do this or I could show you. And so I took pictures of a completed project and uploaded it to the lesson updates. And I will point that out in those two lessons when we get to that. Um, another thing that I wanna point out again are the, um, the Eucharist quotes. Um, we started those last fall. Um, I'd encourage you to, um, to read these aloud with the students and have them point them out to their parents at home. Um, again, we noted this before, the with my family and friends. If you teach or have taught the other, um, the other levels of the Flam Gospel Weeklies, this section is called family, excuse me, family corner. In this level, because students are taking more responsibility for their own work, um, in this level and in the older level for seventh, eighth, and ninth grade visions, um, this act or this area is called with my family and friends. However, the prayer and um, the question and activity, if not identical in the case of the prayer, um, are very similar. Um, similar activities and similar questions. So that's a way um, that if you're teaching the weeklies to most children of multiple ages, that that's a point where all of the lessons are similar, if not exact, for that particular Sunday. Let's see, let's go back. Oh, went too far, sorry about that. Okay. But let's start with this first lesson for January 17th in 2021. 
Okay. The theme for this lesson is Jesus calls his first followers and the cover activity is who leads the church. This is both clergy and lay leaders. Let's challenge the children to think about how they themselves lead or serve in their parish or parish school. So we're gonna play this as kind of like a bingo and just completing these, the pictures are free spaces, but um, just completing them, you don't need markers or you know or game markers or game pieces, just completion of these, um, these questions suffices. You know, try to get as many bingos as you can. And, and students can play in partners if you think that that's a better idea for your class. Um, prep ahead, uh, note the special materials for this lesson. Um, copies of your parish bulletin or um, a link set up to your parish website or digital bulletin. And um, there's an activity on the last two pages. I'll flip to that quick. Um, these first, follow first followers playing cards, you'll see here the front and back. And you can distribute scissors, or excuse me, you can prep a set you will need to distribute scissors when you do this activity in class, but um, just to prep a set so they can see what they need to do. Um, let's see, let's start with the story. As you know, we have a story or article in every lesson that kind of primes the pump for the discussion of the Sunday gospel. This week, it's about good Pope John the 23rd, um, which, um, Seems like ancient history to kids this age. <laughs> so, but um, explain to the children that this Pope led major changes in the church about 60 years ago, which again, sounds like eons to them, but is really a short time in the life of the Catholic church. Um, the, you'll notice here that the highlighted um, Catholic faith word in this lesson is Pope. We don't um, assume that children um, will know, be familiar with that word or know what a Pope is, but that is our, um, the leader of the Catholic Church. All right, and then um, when you come across that Catholic faith word in the lesson, um, it's a good time to pause and look for the definition. It's usually, if it's not on that page, it's on that same spread of pages. So it should be easy to find and not interrupt your lesson too much. Um, let's see, take some time to go through the timeline. All right, um, again, if you're just kind of jumping into teaching at the, um, in this unit, um, page four in Venture is always really the heart of the lesson in terms of um, what you wanna to convey to your students. Everything else helps and supports it and also allows the children to apply it, but this is the reading and the doctrine for this Sunday. This is the gospel in which Jesus is calling his first followers. And um, assign parts to volunteers if you're teaching at home. Um, split the parts, um, get younger siblings or older siblings to participate. Um, we've even heard about some people who will do this on Zoom and grandparents can read parts um, to add a little novelty to your, um, to your reading out loud. This is just an opportunity to be creative in how we, um, how we teach these lessons. Um, this Sunday too, you wanna to point out to the kids that we return to ordinary time and ordinary sounds blah, ho, hum. But that in the church, this means that we return to the time where we talk about Jesus and his ministry. So actually these are some pretty extraordinary times. Um, make sure that you take the time to discuss the think questions and then um, move on to the gospel quickly to, um, to keep that continuity um, and make sure that you answer those same, um, those think questions after, um, after you read the section as well. And each of these, um, we often note a particular part of the Catechism of the Catholic Church. We don't in this particular lesson, but know that this section is based on that um, on the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Then uh, we discussed this in the beginning, excuse me, this, um, this little icon here 
is the cover of your catechism handbook, What the Church Believes and Teaches. So as I noted, this is the Sunday of the church. We move from the birth and the baptism of Jesus to his ministry on earth, and we're in ordinary time. So we would open up the book, and there is a part in the lesson, whether you're in the parent teaching pages, that same icon is there as a, as a visual reference. In the larger teaching guide, it's um, set off in a gold box. Or excuse me, yes, blue box in venture, sorry. Um, and the, this discusses um, the mission of Jesus on earth. All right. Um, even though we talk about in the church, we do um, National Vocation Awareness Week was back in um, November of 2020. Um, this is a good time, liturgically speaking, to talk about vocation. And um, as Jesus is calling his disciples and he calls fishermen and he calls people from all different professions, um, but they all had the vocation um, to share the good news of Jesus. And so um, there's also a discussion of, um, of specific vocations that people have in the church um, through the sacrament, that they're called to through the sacrament of matrimony and the sacrament of holy orders. And um, to do a little discussion about um, these sacraments that are at the service of communion. All right. And make sure to pause and give the students some time to do, um, to do some reflection on their own, to put some of these things, to begin to at least, to put some of these things into their own words. All right, click to the next page, St. Andre of Montreal. Um, wherever possible, we try to um, put saints features, either when they'll be canonized, um, and so a lot of those happen in October, but um, in this particular case, um, St. Andre's feast day is January 6th. So we try to get it during the week that the feast day is celebrated. And if that's not possible, because we have so much else going on that particular week, um, as we did this year, we put it as close as possible. And you can also, of course, um, talk about St. Andre's vocation, and that's a nice tie-in as well. All right, and we just discussed at the beginning prepping these first followers cards. And I want to note, um, so these are some of the, um, some of Jesus' disciples and early followers, but also the students will have an opportunity to, um, to think of someone they know, um, either another saint um, or um, disciple or someone they know from current day, somebody, um, a modern day disciple. You'll see on the back that there are symbols of each of these followers and they can also create a symbol for their own card. All right, let's go on to the second lesson of eight. This is January 24th, 2021, the third Sunday in ordinary time. If you wanna get that lesson in front of you, if I can get my doc to go, or excuse me, my deck to go down. Excuse me. And um, this is a map study. Uh, we do that from time to time to give students um, a point of reference. You, if you have access to current day maps, um, it'd be nice to show them to the students. Obviously, the Mediterranean Sea um, is not a made up place, <laughs> it, ex it exists, it's a place that you can go, Jerusalem, Bethlehem, Egypt, to identify some of these places um, that, uh, places where Jesus taught. Okay, oh, an activity prep here, note that you'll need um, either a whiteboard um, or newsprint to record uh, student responses. Okay. Let's go on. Because we're now jumping deeply back into, um, into ordinary time, this is also the point at which uh, the students will be encountering the Sunday Gospels um, for several weeks that are in our new gospel for this liturgical year. 
per mark. And you can remind them that the liturgical year actually started on the first week of Advent, but um, our reading of this gospel for this new liturgical year um, really begins and continues at this point. So with that in mind, we offer an introduction to the gospel and it's in a Q&A interview format with the gospel writer and um, make sure to spend some, um, some time with the timeline that runs across the bottom of both pages. Spend some time with that. Note here, the Catholic faith word, sacred tr tradition. This is an example of where it's not on the page or on the spread. So we have it noted here that um, it's actually, the definition is actually on page five. So that is one example where you're gonna have to flip forward and flip back. All right, let's go back. Okay, just checking my notes. Actually, we can go on to the gospel for this week. Jesus calls for fishermen. So um, these are stories that your students actually may have heard and or remember and be familiar with. And that's, and acknowledge that if they, um, if they're like, oh, I remember that story. <laughs> so um, encourage that and encourage them to share what they know about this gospel story. Um, if you go on to um, the gospel and doctrine, like Jesus calls the four fishermen, he also calls us to live in community and to share, um, share our gifts and talents um, and be a, um, an active part of our community of faith. And some of the questions kind of talk about that, um, ways that you invite others to join you um, in community. Um, on the WCBT, go to page seven, and um, there's the section about um, how Jesus speaks to all generations. This is a bit of review, but then we're going to ask the students to, um, to ask themselves, how does Jesus' message to his disciples more than 10,000, or excuse me, 2,000 years ago still apply to us um, yet in, um, at this time in 2021? All right. Um, th this page five is um, typically, almost always, 95% of the time, the Our Catholic Faith feature. And it's usually something about Bible history, like in the case of, of this article on the village of Capernaum, or it will be about a part of the Mass, something that gives the kids deeper um, understanding about what they're seeing at Mass, um, or what they're hearing in the scripture at, on, um, on Sundays at mass. So explain to the children that this is where Jesus called some of his first followers. All right. Okay. Um, this week, Uh, this is a short play about the story of Jonah, the reluctant prophet. Um, contrast this with the gospel in which the four men immediately leave their lives, you know, drop their nets and their jobs and follow Jesus. Jonah is not so quick to respond <laughs> to God's call um, and challenge the children to consider whether they're more like Jonah or they're more like the disciples and why that might be. Okay. And with these, it's really your call. Um, if you have students that are really, or children who are really into drama, stage some of these things, encourage large movement. And if you like to do props or if you have props available, that's great. But if you're not, it can be a, safe, a simple table read as well. All right, and we have a saint's feature, Saint Monica and Augustine. All right, and this is, I, I wanna point this out too. Um, the saints feature can also be used as a pacing activity. If your students have completed questions or activities and they're waiting patiently or impatiently <laughs> for, for the class to continue on, you can say, why don't you look at the saints cartoon on page eight and read ahead? And then they can share that information when the whole class gets together. Or if you run out of time, 
um, or if you're in a good discussion on something else, this can be assigned as homework. All right. Okay, um, and this is the third lesson, uh, January 31st, uh, 2021, fourth Sunday in Ordinary Time. You see that with the, again here, with the green and the green. I promise I won't belabor that <laughs> anymore. Um, the theme for this lesson is Jesus teaches and heals. This is, as the students will have learned last week, that is a hallmark of Mark's Gospels, him um, talking about the healing power of Jesus. Um, the cover here, just to make a note, wherever possible, we try to mesh what, what the students may be learning um, in other subjects, um, whether they're in um, a parish school or um, in public school, they are likely going to encounter um, Black History Month, which will start this week. Um, it's celebrated um, or recognized in February. And we try to um, try to mesh with the, the other good learning that students are doing. So um, a note about the QR code on this page, again, that's an opportunity to learn more about Augustus Tolton. And again, we don't make these long. I, on purpose, uh, I don't think anything is ever longer than a five minute video. Uh, let's see. Oh, let's go to the next page. Um, the theme of this lesson, lesson again is that Jesus teaches and heals. And this is an example of how um, a student who was doing um, service in Africa um, then took that experience and continued it by um, um, starting his own um, nonprofit organization in the same area. And one of the things that you can do to prep in advance is when our, the writer of this article interviewed the person who started this program, they, you know, we always try to engage the student, our students in, um, in participating, you know, especially if they get excited about something, we wanna help them take that next step. And one of the things that he suggested that you could do is to um, send a note or postcard. And so you could prep that in advance and have the materials for the students to do postcards or, um, or cards. And um, there's information about how to, um, how to get in touch with this organization and um, how to send those materials to the children in this program. All right, let's go to the gospel for this week. Jesus teaches and heals. This is the Catholic faith word synagogue expand the student's vocabulary with that. Just pause briefly and share that definition. All right. Jesus has spent the last two Sundays calling disciples, and now they, those disciples will witness him at work, healing this week, healing a man with an unclean spirit, and teaching as he performs this miracle. All right. The doctrine, the associated doctrine with the Sunday gospel is the healing of the man with the unclean spirit not only reveals um, Jesus' healing power, it also reveals that this healing is for everyone and no one is outside the love of God. Okay. Um, this again, if turn to the, um, the WCBT handbook and uh, remind the children that they learned about the seven themes of Catholic social teaching last fall. Let's return back to those themes, but to apply them, which of these themes, um, which of the themes that are listed there actually apply to the Sunday gospel? Um, and then turn to page 32 and um, discuss what do Jesus' actions in this gospel tell us about the common good? And if you're looking at this going, eh, I need more guidance about this. <laughs> if you go in, the teaching guide, we go step by step on this. These are kind of just a little, um, a summary of what we want the students to get out of this section in the handbook, but we take you step by step in, um, in you know, reading paragraph by paragraph in the questions that, um, that you should ask or that you can ask the students. So um, it's, it's very detailed in the guide. 
And I would say not just in the guide, but also in the parent teaching pages. So we walk you through um, that section of the lesson step by step. We went over that. Um, again, as we talked about last week um, with the village of Capernaum, this week we talk about um, different examples of people from Africa in the Bible. And so um, you'll need to either have um, an online Bible, someplace where the students can look up, type in um, citations and look up their readings or um, a family Bible. And um, you could have students work together or um, depending on how familiar your child is with the Bible, you may wanna help them um, navigate how you go from the chapter and verses, how you find the chapter or the, re excuse me, the book, then the chapter and then the verses. Okay. Okay, let's go to the next page. Um, and this, the Living the Gospel, which is usually on pages six, seven, if not, it's on, or page seven, eight, usually if it has a cutting activity. This is an application of the gospel, which is probably pretty self-explanatory with the Living the Gospel um, header. So that you explain to the students that, that these things that are written 2000 years ago are just as meant for us today as they were for Jesus followers and those first listening to him in person. And this is a way that the children can take real life examples um, and apply that teaching. And, you know, if you're working with your student, with one student, definitely go through them together. Because the power, I think, of a lot of these is that you have either small groups or partners working together. Um, so if you know somebody else in the class and you're teaching this at home, it might be a nice idea if you can get them on FaceTime or you can get them on Zoom and they can discuss some of these things together because it's nice to discuss them with your peers, I think. All right, so um, typically there's uh, three or four in this example. There are, oh, overshot there. My computer's a little slow today. Um, in this case, we have um, four examples. And if the point, if you've kind of gotten the point across and they feel repetitive, oftentimes in class, we assign one of these activities to each small group. So, you know, if, if, if you really feel that the point has gotten across when you're just working with your own child, um, you know, preview them and choose the one that you think that your student will respond to most readily. All right, and again, um, St. Bridget of Kildare, um, again, use it as a pacing activity, use it as, as an independent reading project. One thing I wanted to note, these QR codes, just can't get enough of them, um, noted here, this is a fun video about how to make a St. Bridget's cross. And you'll need like, I suppose you could do it with like the chenille sticks, I call them pipe cleaners, um, revealing my age. Um, or if you happen to have reeds or straw, maybe you have straw left over from a manger scene, um, all of those things would be good materials for making a St. Bridget's cross. And again, I don't think that, that video, I don't think that that one's over five minutes either. Okay, let's move on to the fourth lesson of this unit, the fifth Sunday in Ordinary Time. The theme is Jesus raises up, heals, and frees. We're continuing again this discussion of um, Mark's healing um, gospels. So activity prep, we have a two, I mentioned this at the beginning, we have a two week um, activity. Um, the first week of Jesus ministry as told by Mark um, happens so the first two chapters happen over a week. And so uh, there's a lot going on in that first week. And so this activity allows you to, um, or allows the students to trace um, those activity or the different stories that happen in that first week in Mark's gospel. I hope I explained that properly. Um, let's go back to the beginning. So what I was going to say is, is that it's a good idea to prep that. And there's a QR code with that activity 
And I'd encourage you, it's an interesting <laughs> folding technique where it's kind of folded like an accordion. And then, so that's for the first week. And then the second week we'll continue that accordion and you just tape the two of them together. But um, rather than, you know, spend 500 words explaining how to do that, you can just hover over that QR code and it will take you directly to our website in the lesson updates and it'll show you. And I think that that will, um, in this particular case, <laughs> showing rather than telling will be, um, will be a better way to go. Um, and I would encourage you to prep one of those, um, those booklets beforehand and remind you um, to hang on to them, especially if you are teaching in person, to hang on to this week's booklet and then send it home um, after next week, after you assemble the two parts and um, attach them together. All right, you will also need scissors to put together that activity. And then again, next week you'll need the tape. So let's go on to the story um, this week. Let's say, um, just to introduce this, this story, while we don't have the healing power of Jesus that we see in Mark's miracle stories, we too can bring healing to situations where there's division. That's the focus of this week's story that prepares students for the Sunday gospel. So this is an example of not wanting to include everyone and be kind to everyone. Um, play, I think they're playing broom ball. Yes. Okay, make sure that you spend some time um, on these think questions and encourage everyone to participate. There's some people who are always gonna jump in and wanna raise their hand and share. Um, some people who are gonna be a little more hesitant to do that, but everything, everyone has something valuable to contribute. So um, do your best. Um, to encourage everyone to share, but obviously respect those um, who are just more hesitant um, to share their feelings or to share their answers. All right, we're gonna move on um, to the gospel for this week. Um, again, this is um, an example of Jesus healing power. He heals um, Simon Peter's uh, mother-in-law, but also builds a reputation for um, healing people of their diseases and casting out evil spirits. Um, the, what we want to note here too um, is that Jesus acts with compassion. This is not a bother for Jesus. This is why he's here, um, is to comfort those who are sad and sick and afraid and alone. And that we are also too called to share compassion with others when we see them suffering in any way. Um, there's a tight connection then to the WCBT, um, page 24, where there's a discussion of the sacrament of anointing of the sick to help the students become more familiar with that um, and to identify the five graces that are given to people who receive the sacrament. All right, we'll move on to the Our Catholic Faith feature. Again, this is a very tight lesson in terms of um, the topic of healing. Um, there is a healing prayer service. You can save this for the closing prayer. Um, I also want to make a note here. Obviously, if you're doing this prayer service at home and everyone is in the same um, bubble together, and obviously a family is all safe together, you can um, offer this prayer service and celebrate it together as is. Obviously, you would have to modify and you um, wouldn't be touching each other's forehead or hands um, with maintaining social distancing. So you just need to, um, to modify as your parish or school's rules um, call for. Uh, again, the, um, the Catholic faith word is uh, disciple and to emphasize that, um, that Jesus called disciples, but he calls us as well. All right, let's move on. The saint's feature for this week, St. Josephine Bikita. It is her feast day this week. Okay. And again, the first part of that gospel booklet that we discussed. And just a note to save it. This is, this is the example that this is actually where I'm circling right here is the front of the book and it accordion folds. Um, and you'll look up at the top and you'll see that, you know, it's day one in the morning and day one at noon. And as you, it'll be at the top, you can see those, those um, green 
headers right here. But again, to see a completed folded project that I did here at the office, um, you would just hover over this or go to this address right here. And we've already uploaded those directions for you. All right, let's move to the fifth lesson. This is the 21st lesson of the year, if you're keeping track out of 32. It is Valentine's Day, February 14th, 2021, and the sixth Sunday in Ordinary Time. The theme for this lesson is Jesus shows us that God's love is for everyone. Uh, another prep note, it's Ash Wednesday this week. Um, there is an Ash Wednesday prayer service that we'll point out. Um, also, um, just a note, the second half of the, um, the gospel booklet that you began last week, again, the assembly directions are presented in the same way with the URL, um, as well as the QR code. And at this point, uh, the students will need scissors and tape. And that project can go home because it's completed after this week. Um, the cover activity here, give the children time to work independently, but be ready to give clues to, um, to prevent frustration. Encourage them to look at the, um, the illustrations. Uh, hint, Jesus is a hands-on healer. It's touch. And all of those answers are in the teaching guide as well as in the parent teaching pages. And if I failed to include them, first of all, I'm sorry, that's very frustrating. But the second place to look is in those lesson updates at gospelweeklies.com. And I think it's lesson hyphen updates. So that would take you directly there. All right, let's go to the story. All right, we read these stories about Jesus healing, not only to appreciate his power, but also to consider how we might bring healing to situations and to people in our own lives. And this story um, is unfortunately timely because it's about how one family helps their extended family, um, an aunt and uncle, and their two children, um, helps them during a difficult time. Um, that would be unemployment and homelessness. And to just be sensitive about what's going on, if you are teaching to a classroom um, of students online or in person, that this may be things that they are experiencing in, in their home. So, um, encourage students to take turns reading the article, or excuse me, reading the story. Um, and yeah, okay. Make sure that you take um, the, oh, I'm sorry. I wanted to pause here on this feature to also talk a little bit about why a family might become homeless to um, just have some, some real life discussion about that, um, that very real issue. Okay. Um, again, this is another healing gospel for this Sunday. Jesus heals a man with leprosy. Make sure that the children understand that this is not just about curing an illness. It's about welcoming and including someone who was on the, out, on the fringes of society outside of his friends and family due to his contagious condition. Um, and, and consider with the children, who do, who do they know who is on the outside of things? that let's say they don't have a circle of friends, for example, for whatever reason. Um, the doctrine is um, Jesus healing actions provide a model for us and how we might love our neighbor and be aware of those needs. All right, and in the WCBT, this is, um, the students will have been engaged in different types of prayer uh, during the year, but this is a formal look at the six different types of prayer. And normally when we teach this in a classroom, again, we would separate the kids into different groups and each one of them would have a different, um, a different type of prayer and then they would report back to the larger group. So break it up as you see fit again, if you're teaching at home with one student. All right, let's go on to the next page. We're at the Our Catholic Faith feature um, and talking about the things that um, bring us together as a community. Um, and obviously for Catholics, Holy, Commun or Holy Communion is um, the most important way we come together as a community. And the Catholic faith word um, for this week, we talk a little bit about the whole structure 
of the Mass. Um, they have talked about this previously, the Liturgy of the Word and the Liturgy of the Eucharist. And we talk um, a little bit about um, the homily specifically. That's the Catholic faith word. Okay. Let us move on. Um, the prayer service, which you can save for the end um, of class. Okay. Um, is for Ash Wednesday. We also, um, we encourage the children to participate in whatever parish services um, are happening in your area as your parish is able to hold those services and encourage families to share this prayer service together, especially if um, they're not able to celebrate with their parish community. Okay, and again, the second half um, of that gospel booklet. And let's see. Again, there's that handy dandy um, illustration of that accordion fold. Tape them together, send them home. All right, um, this is the, let's see, this is the sixth of eight lessons. We have switched into, I told you I wasn't gonna belabor the liturgical colors, but I gotta point it out that we've switched to violet here. And up here, we are in Lent. Um, this is an introductory crossword puzzle. Um, encourage them to look in their WCBT books for, um, for answers. Um, but a lot of these, they should be able to figure out themselves. If not, um, and you want them to work in, in pairs, this is a great opportunity to do that. This is about learning. This isn't about quizzing at this point, this opening activity. All right, emphasize that the theme for this lesson is that Lent is a time for us to grow, to grow and to change. All right, the story, um, introduce this story by noting that everyone is tempted by something. Um, choices that might not be the best for us or for those around us. Make sure that the children have some quiet time during this lesson period to consider the temptations that they most have trouble with. Um, if it's me, it's maybe unhealthy foods or too much time spent on, on my phone. I don't have a temptation of gaming, but I know that a lot of students, a lot of children at this age, um, want to be on PlayStation or want to be on their gaming system of choice. Um, there, but to have them consider other habits that they have, um, that could be improved or changed. And this story, um, is a about the, um, this boy was tempted and actually uh, took money from a family member so that he could um, buy a game, a video game. Um, what's kind of fun about this is um, the kids get to select what they think would happen next. And if they don't like these responses too, they can also come up with their own. Kids love to debate these, but what if? <laughs> Um, let's see. Okay, the, uh, the gospel for this first Sunday of Lent is a Jesus-based temptation. Um, he spent 40 days in the desert. Remind them that Lent is 40 days long. That's no coincidence. Um, but also, too, um, to remind them that Lent isn't just a time of sad deprivation. It's a time to grow. It is a positive thing. Let's see. Uh, okay. This week, or this Sunday, we begin three weeks of Old Testament readings about making covenants with God. I like to point out every time we have a series so that you can note, remember last week, remember two weeks ago, we've been learning about this and building on that learning. So turn to page six in uh, what the church believes and teaches and read the section titled, God wants to be close to people. And um, what important covenant have you already likely made with God? And I will not tip my hand. You will find that out on page six. Won't give it away. All right. But the answer will be in your teaching guide too. All right. Um, the Our Catholic Faith feature. Again, this is the beginning of three weeks of discussing um, the importance of covenants and promises. 
Um, it's a focus on our Old Testament ancestors. This week it is Noah. Now, this will certainly be a story that most students will know about. Okay. Let's go. Sorry, I lost my page in my notes. Lost my place rather. Okay, let's go on to the next lesson or the, um, the application um, of what they've learned through the Sunday readings. Uh, a covenant makes a new relationship. Now at the beginning of the school year, you probably set a class covenant, certainly class rules and expectations. And so you could talk a little bit about that, maybe even revisit those, um, those promises that you made just to introduce this idea. Um, but then this is um, a time where you can do a little, let me get to the next page, um, where you can do um, a class covenant specifically for Lent um, and then give the students time to reflect on their own promises and covenants that they want to make for Lent. And then you see down here, this little strip, um, it was intended to be like a bracelet that you could wear, but how often are you gonna, or how long are you gonna be able to wear a paper bracelet? So you could definitely wear the bracelet for now and just tape it, don't glue it so it could be taken apart and displayed somewhere, you know, on a, on a nightstand or on a refrigerator. Those are always popular places in our house. Um, but just as a reminder of the things that they're working on that they promised to try to work on during Lent. Okay, um, this quiz is uh, based on um, what they've learned. Some things about the sacraments, some things about saints, um, some things about the gospels. It'll take them back. I think I focused mostly on the lessons that they've had since they've come back, you know, so during this unit, but there might be some that challenge them a little further back. Um, and then uh, they will circle a letter based on their answer. And then if you get to the bottom, the answer is gospel means good news. Again, this is the backside of that, um, that bracelet or band um, that's their, their commitment for Lent. All right. Okay, we have two lessons left. This is the seventh lesson. Uh, February 28th, 2021, the second Sunday of Lent. The theme is Jesus reveals himself to us as fully, he has revealed himself as fully human, now fully divine in the transfiguration. Um, note for this week that this week we begin um, several weeks of focus on the commandments. So there's no particular prep, just a note that like the Old Testament series that we began last week, these lessons build on one another. Um, remind the children of what they've learned the previous week as you dive into this week's example. So um, this cover activity, remind the children that Lent is about growth and change. The big word for that is transfiguration. This Sunday, Jesus' friends will see him in a new way in all of his glory as a divine person. Um, the article, um, this is just a reminder to the children. This is a um, a nonfiction article, that the road to change is not always smooth or straight ahead, and sometimes we make mistakes, and that's okay. Um, challenge the children to think about friends. Do you like a friend who never makes mistakes, who always seems perfect and that things come easily to them, or one who can laugh off their mistakes and move on easily? And Miranda in this article talks about the mistakes that she makes as she's, um, as she's learning um, Aikido. And she even writes an essay about it as a part of her, um, her learning um, this activity. Okay, the gospel again is transfiguration. And the doc related doctrine is that Jesus calls us to glory. What do we learn about Jesus through the Sunday's gospel reading? Challenge the children to think about that um, this week. This is the second in our Old Testament series. This week, uh, last week was Noah. This week we focus on Abraham and Sarah and how they are challenged to believe in God's promises. The gospel activity for this week is... Um, Again, uh, focus on the promise that God made with Abraham. God asked Abraham to share the commandments 
um, with his people and to follow them. Um, so this is the beginning of that, um, that commandment series that I talked about. The students learned about the first three commandments last fall and our relationship with God. Um, now we will learn the commandments that guide, um, commandments four through 10, that guide um, how we live with one another. And so this week, it is the fourth commandment, honor your father and mother. My favorite commandment. The kids always roll their eyes when I tell them that. All right, and just a little bit here um, in the WCBT again, just to remind them that they've already learned the first three commandments to review those briefly. And then also um, to on pages 32 through 35 to, um, to spend some time discussing each of the, um, the commandments four through 10. And again, these are just overviews. If you're teaching in person, I would definitely put kids in small groups, have them read their commandment and report back to the large group. So you'll have to pace that as you um, find appropriate if you're teaching that at home. All right, let's move on to the eighth lesson, eighth and final. Oh, excuse me, sorry. Um, again, this puzzle is, it's a puzzle, but it's a review for you to assess how the students um, may or may not have, have picked up um, the information that they need to know about the Ten Commandments. And if you need to emphasize something or review something in a, in a, um, in a future week. All right, this is again, the eighth lesson for this unit. Uh, this is March 7th, 2021, the third Sunday of Lent. The theme is Jesus is God's temple. Um, activity prep. You can prepare for the story or play by dividing assi and assigning parts. You could do some simple props or costumes for fun, but that is totally optional. I've had classes that love to stage plays and others that don't really dig it. And Others could spend all day discussing things while doing crafts and others don't. So my encouragement is to really focus on what your kids enjoy. I wouldn't skip the play, but um, I maybe wouldn't just make as much out of it with staging and props, et cetera, and just do a simple table read going back and forth um, or splitting up the parts. Um, this, uh, this week, the Old Testament story is about Miriam. Stage the play as best you can. If you are meeting in person um, or virtually with your class via Zoom or other video conferencing, you could suggest uh, family members taking different parts. Um, you know, FaceTime with grandma and, you know, take turns reading parts, you know, just to keep things um, <laughs> a little more variety um, in it, when you're teaching at home. Let's go. This is a longer section. Normally our stories don't start on the cover, as you know. You could also break this up in scenes, too, if you're teaching this over a number of days. All right. But the gospel for this lesson is Jesus cleanses the temple. And I don't know you, about you, but I remember being so, as a kid, being so surprised about, like, Jesus was angry. You know, I think about Jesus always being peaceful. And so I think it's important to talk about this. Um, why was Jesus angry? And what did he do because of that anger? Because that's a very real issue for kids, is how, how one deals with their anger. Um, but also point out that in this, where Jesus cleanses the temple, Students will understand the, at this age, you know, fourth through sixth grade, about double entendre. That's something that they're studying in English language arts, but um, and, and double meanings of words. So make sure that the children understand that the temple that Jesus refers to in this gospel is himself. Over three days, he will be killed and will rise again. And that is a foreshadowing, another English language arts concept that they will be familiar with. Um, let's move on to the doctrine. We remain close to God, both through prayer and by keeping his commandments and the comfort we experience in, um, in remaining close to God. Uh, the WCBT, page 57, is about the stations of the cross. This is a regular Lenten activity in many parishes. If your parish is not holding these times of prayer due to COVID, um, Teach your children how to go through the stations, and you may wish to direct families to age-appropriate prayer services. Um, 
uh, with the stations that you can find online, or perhaps your parish is hosting um, an online Stations of the Cross. All right, let's go to the Our Catholic Faith feature. Again, we're, um, we're continuing with our study of the Ten Commandments, um, which, are which are listed in the Sunday's first reading. All right, <laughs> excuse me. Um, we discussed in the gospel about Jesus getting angry. And um, this leads nicely into a discussion about uh, the fifth commandment, you shall not kill. Um, <laughs> a lot of kids and adults uh, may think that they get a pass on this commandment. So I'm not killing anyone. They think that's an easy one to keep. But this commandment really challenges our view of human life and respect for, uh, for human life and for every person and challenge the children to think about whether they've ever quote unquote killed someone with unkind words or, un, or act, you know, uh, unkind or untrue words, um, and certainly unkind actions or attitudes. And this is a good opener to discuss how we can or should manage our anger. Um, we also have a discussion about um, here about what should make you angry, but how you should react to that and how you should channel that anger into, um, into positive ways. Uh, let's see, and our final, um, final page in this unit and in this lesson is um, about Saints Perpetua and Felicity, the patrons of mothers and expectant mothers and their feast, the church um, honors their martyrdom on March 7th. So remember, um, if you have comments, questions, um, problems, you can always um, email us directly at editor at flom.com. That's again, editor at pflaum.com. Um, if you need direction, and also to, to look at the lesson updates at gospelweeklies.com slash lesson hyphen updates. Uh, that's like if you need the directions for that gospel booklet that we talked about. Um, if you're like uh, Nicole, you didn't include the crossword puzzle responses that I needed for lesson six, let us know at editor.com and we will post that, um, or editor at flom.com rather, and we'll post those lesson updates as quickly as possible. It's also a great idea. We're feeling separate from you too um, in this time of COVID. Um, if your students are doing something fun or especially meaningful, or if you have tips on how to do these lessons uh, in a virtual way, um, we'd love to hear about it. We've gotten some great pictures about um, pickup parties at parishes where um, people are picking up their lessons and doing fun activities in a safe way. We'd love to hear about those things too. Thank you so much for listening. Hello, my name is Erica Dilkiri. I am the bilingual editor for uh, Venture. Uh, and I would like to talk very brief briefly to you about the bilingual lessons for Unit 3. First of all, I want to remind you that we have available the teaching guides in Spanish. They are not going to come with your bilingual lessons. You will not receive them with your shipment. Uh, if you would like to receive them printed, you have to ask your sales representative to uh, send them to you directly. If you don't, we have them available in our uh, website, uh, gospelweeklies.com, under Recursos en Español, Spanish Resources. If you visit there, our website, you can download it and print it. Same goes to the parent teaching pages. We do have them in Spanish they are in our website. Speaking of the website, as I told you, if you click on the top button, browse button, you will find uh, Recursos en Español, Spanish resources. Here you will find anything you need for your venture lessons. Uh, this unit, we have two special updates uh, under lesson updates. 
actualizaciones para la lección uh, regarding an activity for the gospel booklet. All the instructions and an image of how that activity is going to look like are going to be there in Spanish as well. And uh, the Spanish videos that you need for your venture lessons are there, your assessments in Spanish, uh, pretty much everything that we have available in English is here for you and your catechists in Spanish. If you have any questions about the bilingual lessons and the bilingual resources, uh, please send me an email at editor at flum.com. Thank you so much and God bless you.